Hello, you're watching Up New X, where a junkie and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. And this is a final review video on the drama that has literally just finished airing two hours ago. Under the skin. Initially, this week is going to air episode 13 to 18, and then next week it's gonna be the ending. But because I guess they realized it's really popular, catching on heat, so they decided to put out more episodes last week, therefore this week it ends. This is a 20 episode web drama that's made by Ning Meng, which is a very familiar production companies now, if you watch a lot of contemporary Chinese dramas in recent years, then iQiyi, which is also the platform that airs it. While they were airing, they did share the rights to Tencent for money, because <laughs> iQiyi doesn't have money, okay? We all know that. It went live on March the 6th and finished airing today, which is March the 16th, making it one of the shortest airing schedule drama in my memory, apart from the ones that dump out the whole thing in one go. This 20 episodes, Crime drama is directed by Xin Jianjun, written by a bunch of writers, but two of them are credited as the leading main writers and then a team of girls writing it. For one of the two main writers, it's Jia Dongyan, who actually wrote the TV version of Feng Sheng. I'm gonna talk more about the process of making this drama later in this video, based on what I read he wrote. The drama is led by Tan Jianci, Jin Shijia. These are the two main male leads, as it is a double male lead kind of drama. Then you have the supporting roles, played by Lu Yanqi, Zhu Jiaqi, Zhang Bojia, also featuring more like a guest starring but very veteran actors such as Wang Xiao, Qin Hai Lu. In this drama, you'll experience every new face turn up, you're like, ah, you're from that drama, ah, you're from that drama. Coincidentally, a lot of the supporting roles who show up in this drama actually have other dramas airing at the same time, around the same time, right now, and it was filmed from March to June last year. So these are the basic information about this drama, and quickly tell you what this story is about, and then good and bad. This video might get longer than usual, because I have a lot of things to say. As this is a unit drama, a lot of cases, a lot of criminals, a lot of procedural things, so cannot really spoil it for you unless I go into specific cases. I'm just gonna mention the overall structure. This story mainly focuses on one particular type of policeman who is a forensic artist. And sometimes people mistake them as profiler, which they're not. Although they do do some kind of jobs of trying to figure out what type of person that they are drawing, and they use whatever resource is available to them trying to produce portraits of suspects in the investigation of all kinds of criminal cases. And this character is played by Tan Jianci in our drama, who is a very talented artist, but due to a unfortunate and unintentional incident happened in his life seven years ago before the story starts, he was a free-spirited and a little bit rebellious artist, and then seven years later, he started to work for the police and became a much more, <laughs> let's say, tame person. Connecting to that incident is our other male lead character played by Jin Shijia, who is the team leader of uh, the police station featured in this drama. And he's very mean, had a lot of pent up anger against our other male lead at the beginning of the drama due to the seven years ago incident, but they had to work together. And as many greatest relationships in this world would have it, starting on the wrong note and getting better and better over the course of the whole drama. Pretty much every two episodes you come across one case, sometimes every 1.5 episodes you get one case done. And there are bigger cases that run longer and there are smaller cases that just happens for half an episode. And by this point, you probably have noticed that I haven't given it a rating yet, which is really late in my usual video structure. Reason being, I have two ratings for it. If I take every personal filter preference, and I know it's totally my emotional thing, out of my rating, I'll give it a two goat mine. Just hitting that, it's not over that. And uh, it does have certain <laughs> shortcomings that I can see as a crime drama. If I add on the personal lens and how much I loved it, it's a three goat mine. If you don't have my filter, you probably are not gonna think it is that great. Good and bad as usual. Point one, starting from the most basics, I like the production quality of this drama. And there are a couple of points particularly enjoyable about this drama. First is it's all recorded on set. Some of the lines you can see that they probably did it in post-production, they changed the lines so the lips don't fit. Apart from those moments, you literally hear all the environmental noises and sound and the imperfections of speaking. And sometimes the sound recording is not the best quality, but it's on set of 
all the real actors speaking and I like it so much. For crime drama, if you dub it, immediately it loses the believability. And then visually, this drama has done a lot of very interesting planning and design of shots. I wouldn't say it's masterpiece or super stylistic like Tianjin Mystic, that type of drama, but compared to other more normal domestic drama, marriage drama, that wouldn't need that kind of angles and movements of camera. This drama has more of a flair of style. And because I've already edited five edits, anyone watching my edits on my second channel know what I do for dramas when I like it. And while I've gone through all the footages over and over and editing my uh, stuff, I really can tell. There's a lot of usable footages of very interesting movements and angles and design of shots that um, if the drama didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to make that many videos. Also, there's a special thing about this drama because our main character, Shen Yi, is an artist who is super talented at painting. You're gonna see a lot of painting involved things and they find really great artists. I don't know who that person is, but I highly, highly, highly appreciate that artist who does all the drawings that's done by him, that has that particular style and how it's filmed, how it's presented on camera. I think they really put a lot of effort trying to make this process enjoyable on screen and also pay respect to the experts of doing this job who are incredible geniuses in this world. Positive point number two, as a crime drama that's case-based, that's heavy on the procedural things of breaking a case, catching the criminals, outsmarting the bad people, it qualifies as a drama. It's not the greatest and it doesn't have enough, I'd say, super clever plot. Dramatization does happen. Concentration of timeline or making complicated things easier to be presented on screen, that type of thing happens with this drama. But overall, I'm happy with the logic side of things. It didn't make me feel you're insulting my intelligence, basically. The third point is also related to the cases, but not to do with the logic and rationality and deduction, but to do with its social value because it looks at so many interesting cases that reflect what is right now ongoing in contemporary Chinese society that happens every day. This drama's cases are all based on research of real cases, but some of the real cases that they're based on are actually crazier than the version you see. And because most of the team of the writers are women, you really see the female perspective of a lot of things that I highly appreciate about girls helping girls, about the pushing to the limit of explicitness of um, sexual orientation and identification problem that you almost don't see in Chinese drama then at all. If I take one step further, it's gonna not pass censorship. Also talks about rather rampant situation of fraud on a very large scale targeting elderly people, talking about plastic surgery and our society's overall anxiety on appearance, talking about female professional people hitting glass ceiling in their field, also human trafficking. While it is a criminal case, it is also um, a mirror of some aspects of the society that has problems. And it has that overall gentle and kind look on humanity. I really, really like how they deal with each individual cases, victims, also culprits. And our main characters were used as the commentators pretty much on these things. It makes this drama warmer than you expect as a crime drama. The fourth great thing about this drama and last thing, and I think that makes it really worked for me to main leads chemistry. And it totally happened beyond my expectation. When I heard this project last year, when it first got announced, I was like, Putting these two together? Seriously? I didn't have a good outlook for this drama and then when the first trailer got released, it's edited in a very show off and obnoxious way. And I was like, ah crap, it's gonna be another zombie drama. So before the drama started, my expectation was like, flatline. And you know what I got? Better than I expected. And even better is it kept going up. I would say the first two episodes, I wasn't really quite happy with a lot of things, but then moving beyond episode four or five, I was like, ah, it's getting there. I see, I see, like there's something unique about this drama. And by let's say episode eight, I think the two leads finally got to the point where that, that chemistry of the leading men and how they compensate each other start to work better and better and better. Watching experience is like this. And I talked extensively about why I think this particular coupling between Tan Jianzi and Jin Shijia worked very well in my Tuesday stream. So if you're curious, you can check that out. It's super long, I know, but 
cannot stop talking when I'm excited. Here, I will just quickly recap three points that I think made this casting of the two leads work. Number one is these two actors are wildly different types of actors. From outward physical appearance, tall, big build, more masculine look and shorter, skinnier, prettier boy look. Totally different on the outside, different voice quality. So when they speak, it's like two totally different notes. And then their style of acting is totally different too. Tan Jian is more on, like I said, the camera tight shot close up actor, has very fine tuned expression muscles and the emotions behind the eyes. Whereas Jin Shi Jia feels more theatrical. He's more like a physical actor who uses his whole body and he looks really more interesting in the wider shot. So there are two types of actors as well. And then their characters are also written as very different polar opposite. So compared to previous two guys leading crime drama that we've had in the last couple of years, many, many of them, these two actors have the most unique pairing. Because I think previous pairings usually feature two actors who are more similar than different. Everything considered even heights. Whereas this drama, as far away as we can go. And it creates this really interesting conflict and on-screen dynamic that I haven't seen before and I enjoyed it a lot. Second thing I think for this drama, they intentionally reduced the possible obnoxious drombiness of the two characters. Shen Yi is a genius of doing portraits. It's very easy to write this type of genius character as so aloof and so weird and has so many psychological problems that they're not likable. And thankfully the script made him very talented, but at the same time, very gentle in everything he does. It even comes with the styling of his clothing and stuff. So it reduces that weird and uniqueness of a genius. Then for Jin Shi Jia's character, same thing happens. I think it's a great thing that he put on quite a lot of weight in this drama as compared to Tianjin Mystic 2. Had he looked like Tianjin Mystic 2 when, when he was chiseled and super skinny, he would look too threatening. He will no longer have that almost cute and cuddly quality. And as the story develops, it starts to take on more comedy. And because of his face being much plumpier than before, he actually just suits that comedy rhythm so much better than him when he was skinny. And so this drama very cleverly reduced basically the outstanding quality of the two characters that would make them too far away from being a normal person. And at no point I got offended by basically the drama showing of two Bi Wang <laughs> in the super obnoxious kings of guys who are too self-aware of how girl they look or whatever. And then the third point is I really like the fact that it's not BL and I don't ship them in that way either. As characters or as real people in life, they just look like two totally different guys happen to be really good pal. Later in this drama, how much they trust each other and how much they rely on each other and how many just like absolutely cute interactions they have are totally like you're my best pal type of thing. This drama doesn't really officially in any way try to sell the any BL hinted stuff. They don't do super slow-mo of two people staring at each other endlessly, you know, like running together and with the music swelling, just trying to sell the BL hinting thing that happens a lot in two male lead um, dramas. This drama doesn't do that at all in the drama itself and also in its promotion. It doesn't do that at all and I appreciate that so much because really for all the sugars people dig out of this drama and for all the edits I make and I see on China's internet, it's all audiences own imagination. So I enjoyed pretty much everything about this unexpected collaboration between Jin Shi Jia and Tan Jian and really I cannot wait for them to work together again. Then <laughs> one last thing is after watching the ending of this drama, I really appreciate for the last case, one of the ways of catching the bad guy used some type of things that I've seen over 15 years ago when I was in the UK and um, when I was a Darren Brown fan. And they used something that was in one of Darren Brown's mind control episode. And I remember all his mind control stuff. So when that whole process got shown on screen, I was like, shit, yes, 双厨狂喜. Internet word, that means basically you have one thing you like and another thing you like and they're not related. Somehow when they come together, unexpected. If you're a Darren Brown fan, uh, you probably, once you watch a drama, you'll know exactly what I mean. So all the good things out of the way, this drama is not perfect. <laughs> okay, I've said, you know, I have two ratings for it. The cases themselves. Some of the cases are stronger, some are weaker, and then you have certain cases that kind of didn't 
really give it resolution. There are a couple of cases in this drama that where for the case itself, it kind of resolves. But then you're curious about the people who actually got affected by this case, what would happen to them. And some of their cases actually brought up older stuff and those older stuff never gets mentioned in terms of how are they gonna get resolved? Do other people get punished for what they've done like a long time ago that caused this case? You're curious about that? And the drama doesn't show you. Details of it sometimes that doesn't quite 100% make sense or convinces you. For example, one of the characters makes a deduction based on something it's like, because of this, 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 therefore this person can't only be this. Whereas I would give a counter argument there if I were there, I was like, yeah, but you actually don't have 100% solid logical advantage of saying that. It could still be the other thing. And you can tell they do it because they have to push the plot forward and they voluntarily ignore certain things. They also do procedures sometimes wrong on camera in terms of how you use lab equipment. But hey, that's like, if you're not specialized in it, you will not notice it. And if you are, like a junkie on detective stories, deductions, tight logic, super exciting twists, you are not gonna be happy about this drama. Probably wouldn't super disappoint you either, but it's like a lukewarm level of acceptableness. Then if you totally don't feel the chemistry, then it's just another drama. It may not sustain you through the drama. So that's totally a personal thing. It worked on me, didn't work on other people, I, I can see that on the internet and it's totally fair. So you may not find this drama that impressive if you don't dig them. What is Alnuex speaking? This is just an average drama. Now, finally, to conclude this super long video, first is the scriptwriter, how they got this. And it's from the lead scriptwriter's own writing. That's on Douban. If you read Chinese, you can go and check it out. It's literally on the page of Lie Zui Tu Jian's official page. They had this thing ready already around 2019 and it went pitching to all kinds of platforms, but nobody wanted to take it until they met Ning Meng, the production company. After he wrote Feng Sheng espionage drama with Xu Lu and uh, Wen Yongshan leading it, he was like, he wants to write another story about police and cases, but then he doesn't have enough research to back it up. So he went with other people to basically do field study and try to see if there's anything that will catch his eye. And that's when he come across this unique type of police called Hua Xiang Shi in Chinese, it literally means portrait artist. And he mixed them up with profiler and then realized it's not the same thing. In the process, he learned about their unique job and what they do and how many cases they've broken, how incredible it can be. And he decided I'm gonna focus on this particular type of police as the main character of our story. Then they collected a lot of real cases. Originally, this story is designed as a 24 episodes drama and it has five to six more cases than the version we've seen today. Eventually, they cut down all those cases because they realized some of the cases, although they're good, they don't fit into the overall mood of the drama. And because they collected a lot of cases, they're still working on the research. There's a possibility of them doing a second season, although it's at a very early stage, no promises. I can't wait, I don't care, like one year, two year, I don't care. I wanna see a second season of this police station, not just the two leads, but every other supporting role that features in this team. And they're lovely characters, and I can't wait to see their second third season. Then the thing that I want to mention at the very end of this video is if you think in the drama, Tan Jianzi's role is too godlike with his abilities, there are actually real people like that in China. There's only totally around 100 of them. The level of how incredible they can be is rather beyond your sort of common sense. There's a documentary in China about uh, two of the best known portrait artist policemen in China, and they've broken so many cases and so many of them are even more crazier than the ones featured in this drama in terms of how little information they have and how accurate they can reproduce the drawings of those suspects. One of the guy actually did a live stream recently with this crew with Ai Qi. He is a policeman called Ling Yuhui and he was invited by FBI back in 2017 to help locate who is the suspect of the murder of the Chinese overseas student Zhang Yingying, which made a huge news in China. And you can look it up on Wikipedia, it has it. He was only supplied with a super, super vague image 
of a distant car on on the street with a pixel level like couple of pixel level of this person's dark profile and he produced a drawing that later turned out to be very close to the criminal it's on the internet you can search that so it's real like people can do that and i don't know how they do it but some people have incredible brains and this guy is so cool that he can do sensui hua lao as described in this drama although the drama did it in a more <laughs> dramatic way he has already helped over 20 families find their missing kid kids who went missing when they were around two years three years old he would look at their childhood photo and then obviously still look at the parents it's important you need the parents kind of to figure out what they will look like and producing drawings adult look of these people and with his drawing he has helped over 20 people finding their family and that's just the one snippet of his things and he's broken thousands of cases in his career so these people do exist if you think the drama is like dramatizing it too much it's actually not that much that would conclude the super long final review <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna be a pain for having an exit to subtitle but I don't regret it, I love it and I have more edits coming for this drama and Billy Billy probably will have all the edits I do but I'm still working on them because I need the last two episodes footage to complete my work Thank you for watching Avenue X I'll see you in my next video Meanwhile, live long and happy Drama watching